So welcome back to the channel. Uh, my name is Malcolm. Glad you guys can be here with me yet again as you know we build up this channel, as we build up this podcast. I'm super excited to keep this going. Now, uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, business planning as a family. If we want to start a family business, uh, businesses don't just happen out of thin air. They have to be, you know, they have to be planned out. They have to be uh, uh, strategically worked out. Ideas need to be thrown at the wall. Ideas need to be scrapped. Ideas need to be fleshed out. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And so um, it's the top of the year. And, you know, just like any other businesses do, uh, me and my family, we business plan uh, at the end of the fourth quarter to be ready for 2023 and first quarter of 2023. In the first like six weeks, we have a super, super detailed game plan on how we are attacking this year. Now, a lot of people, you know, uh, when, when they start their family businesses and they decide, okay, this is what we're trying to do. This is what we want to do. And uh, they get together for that first inaugural meeting and, you know, uh, ideas are thrown, you know, ideas are, are written down and things like that. And then really nothing ever comes of that because there's no real plan set in place. There are dreams, there are aspirations. We need to do this. We need to do that. But there's no real strategic way of going about that. Now, with what me and my family do, make sure, you know, and I, I say this is a rule for everybody. Everybody needs to have a note taker, dedicated note taker that is going to jot down any and everything that is said during that meeting okay because um there are plenty of times where you say something off the cuff and then when it gets time you, you know we say though didn't we talk about that or didn't we discuss that and there's no notes there's no real record of that even being said and then you know things don't get accomplished things don't get executed on so what you need to do, you need to have a dedicated note taker. That is super, super important. And just, just some real guidelines for just any meeting, not just uh, you know a business meeting. It could be a meeting at your job, or a team meeting, and things like that. Make sure there's only one person speaking at a time. Okay, try to be disciplined in that, and try to understand like the value in that only one voice at a time. Because once we start to speak over each other, ideas and the note taker isn't sure who to listen to. Ideas can be lost. Some really, really good nuggets of information can be lost if too many people are talking at the same time. So, try your best. And I understand emotions. I understand you know passions. I understand that. But try your best to make sure only one person is speaking at a time, okay? So that's one thing. So uh, we, we talked about notes. We talked about uh, one person speaking at a time. Now, when you guys uh, plan for the year, try to plan out your year in four quarters, okay? Because that's how a lot of businesses run, but definitely try to plan out your year in four quarters because a lot of the times when we make any goals, right? This is human being stuff. When we make goals and we make them like really, really far out. The the gap between the, the the finished product and accomplishing that seems like really far off. Okay, so if you have a major goal for your business, break it down into small chunks. Okay, and how you do that is you break. You have your major goal at the end of the year, your income goal, your a project you want to complete, anything like that. Make sure you break those goals down by step by step from each quarter. So step one, uh, say we want to uh, publish a book at the end of the year, right? December, we're trying to publish a book. Uh, step one is, you know, uh, first quarter, make sure we have a working draft ready. Okay. Make sure we've done all the writing. Make sure we've hit our word count or something like that. Quarter two, make sure we get a professional editor. Make sure we get, you know, this book, uh, 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 you know, uh, reading smoothly, formatted, and things like that. Make sure we get a good editor, proofread, you know, all of that stuff, right? Step three, maybe making sure uh, we get a publisher, right? If you want to self-publish, there are many different self-publishing companies out there. We could talk about that in another episode as well, self-publishing, because actually today, three years ago, I put out my first book, right? Urban Excellence, Unveiling Extraordinary Stories by Everyday People. That's a shameless plug right there. But Right, so you want to look for a publisher. You know, uh, quarter three, quarter four, the book is ready. The book is, in, but 
the the most important part will be the marketing, will be the promotion, right? So you, I just uh, had a project that seemed, you know, like like a really big goal, but you break it down step by step, and what you do in those quarters because each quarter is three months, right? What you do is you break the goal down even. Uh, even smaller, so it's even it's more doable. Okay, it's more achievable, and then you can uh, mark and 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 schedule out when these goals need to be done. You need to have deadlines, real deadlines. Okay, real deadlines, because as I said before, you guys need to treat this business as a real business, not as a hobby. If you ever want to, you know, see any real success. Okay. We, we have a few major goals. We have like three major goals every year that we want to accomplish. And we make sure we break these things down by quarter, right? And we have quarterly goals. We have um, we have monthly goals. We have weekly, weekly goals. And those are all can be, you know, different things. But make sure that you are planning out your goals. And you also have to make sure you understand what those goals entail, you know, uh, when when it comes to like social media and things like that, we just think like let's just set these huge goals, and we'll just get we you know we, we'll do everything we can to get to them. Sometimes you really need to be strategic in how you get these things done. You, time needs to be set aside. Uh, finances need to be set aside. Uh, um, you need you need to be strategic in how you do these things. So you don't want to just throw caution to the wind. You know, make a goal with no real strategy or plan of attack on how you're actually going to accomplish it. That's 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 that. Okay. Also, okay, we're talking about family business, and I think this is super super important. When you business plan and you're having your business meetings, those can double as family meetings, right? That's what this is all about. Family is the foundation. So why not take advantage of that time? These past seven years. I've, um, you know, my, my dad is my dad, my stepmom is my stepmom, my brothers and sisters, but I've learned so much more about them because we're seeing each other in a different capacity. We're seeing each other, you know, when when each of us is stressed out about something, we can talk about these things, you know, during the meetings, you know, after business is handled, but we can talk about these things and then we can figure out, again, another plan of attack. You, you know what I'm saying? I had a baby on the way and we had to figure out, okay... How are we going to, you know, be able to make enough money so I can sustain myself and keep doing with what I'm doing with this business and be able to provide, you know what I'm saying, with for my family as well. So these conversations are real. You get what I'm saying? These conversations can get heavy, but they're necessary. You know what I'm saying? Why not be able to blend the two? And once those once, you know, I spoke about like the disc assessments in uh, the first episode. I spoke about being able to learn each other's work languages as well as each other's love languages and things like that. But once you are able to kind of find that sweet spot between business and family, it's it's really amazing. Okay, now I will not sit up here and act like things are perfect either. I will not sit up here and act like things will be perfect for you either, okay? There will be some arguments, there will be some debates, there will be differences of opinions in these meetings and when you plan and when you strategize and you might have your idea how they need to go about it. This person might have their idea on how they need to go about it, but that's what the meeting is there for. But it's super it's super important and it's, it's like imperative that you don't take you know, anything within those lines of that meeting, of that business slash family meeting personal. And that can be tough because these are person these are people who know you personally. These are your family members. But you really have to be able to understand business versus, you know, personal. And after the business meeting is over, after the meeting is over, chalk it up. You know, you might have lost that debate or you might have, you know, you might feel some type of way about, you know, about this person, but you don't want to take that with you because then things will get completed. Then you, you guys are not com uh, communicating effectively, and things don't get done. We I've had plenty of arguments with my dad during these meetings, with my stepmom during these meetings. Plenty of meet, like plenty of arguments and debates. That like during this, I'm like, you know, this business is over. I'm not doing this somewhere. Then as soon as it's wrapped, it's just like, all right, well, we eating for lunch. You get what I'm saying? Like you, you have to be able to set aside your personal feelings for the betterment of the business and the betterment of like the the 
the company you guys are growing. Okay, so uh, very important. Always write. Make sure one person is talking. Uh, make sure you uh, break things down. Uh, break large goals down into the smallest possible way so you can have a quantifiable deadlines or quantifiable metrics that you're seeing that you uh, you making sure that you're hitting because um, that's very important for progress it's very important for to actually grow okay execution and is the word you need to be able to execute okay um, also don't take anything personal because you know Business is business and, and, and family is family and it can be hard to separate the two. But that's that's the, the I think that's the fascinating part about having a family business. Like that's the fun part and being able to weave in and out when something needs to just be straight business, something needs to just be straight family, and when they kinda need to meet. I think that is the like the, the most, you know, interesting it's it's a beautiful dance that you have to just no, that you have to just be able to do, it. and it's you. You won't get it, you know, or out the out the gate. It's, it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of understanding. There were times that me and my dad, were very close. Uh, we do a podcast. We've been uh, we've done over three hundred and fifty episodes. We've done more videos than that. We've written blogs together. We've you know, me and my dad are very close, and. There were times where I we were letting um, personal things like really get in the mix on how we uh, felt about each other during the business, and we had to like reset. Like, okay, you know, listen, like when you're here, you know, like let's, you know, I, my, my dad said, you know, I'll let you initiate how much I get involved in your personal life, right? And that was big. You get what I'm saying? Because um, he's my dad. He's my he's my partner as well, and. You know the lines were getting like really, really blurred, and it made it a little hard to to actually work. And even at the beginning, I even had a problem with um holding my dad to task because again he's he's my dad. You know what I'm saying? Like if I ask him to do something and he doesn't do it, I'm not gonna press him. Or I wasn't probably you know before I felt like I can't press him. It's, it's my dad, or I can't like you know really hold him to task. Like yo, you said you were gonna do this. I need it. You know what I'm saying? And he had to sit me down again. This is really early. He goes, yo, you know, outside of the business, I'm, I'm your dad, obviously. You get what I'm saying? But in these lines, like, you know what I'm saying? In, you know, within these in these lines of this game of business, we are business partners, okay? Like, I am your equal. We need to make sure that uh, things are done on time. If I'm slipping, let me know. If you're slipping, let me know. So that is a real, real, again, that, that dance, you know what I'm saying? That that dance that you kind of need to just figure out amongst yourselves, whatever the dynamics of the relationships that you guys have in your family business. You kind of just have to figure that out on your own. Okay? And and lastly, when it comes to these family meetings, make sure you're having them consistently, right? Pick a schedule, stick to that schedule. When we uh, when I first like graduated from college. Um, the first business meeting we had was at a restaurant in Harlem, um, and I remember we we wrote all all these plans. Everybody had notebooks. Everybody had planners. We're going through all these things, and we made sure like every Tuesday, like every Tuesday, no matter what, every Tuesday we had these meetings. Now this is very early on, so we didn't even really have a business. Like my dad was coming out with his second book. And we were just, uh, you know, uh, working on ways to be able to sell more copies of his book. And it felt like, and then that was going to lead into the blog, into the podcast that we have. It was supposed to lead into these things because we had, again, a lot of plans. But for like three months, you know, that's a lot of meetings. It felt like nothing was happening. And I was getting frustrated. I was getting impatient. Just like we all do. We want things to just kind of pop right now. We want things to just kind of go. And um, my dad sat me down again. He goes, yo, this might not seem like a big deal because nothing is really happening. But this is the first time we've been able to be consistent with anything. Because, you know, we, I, I don't know everybody else's story, but our story, we start stuff and end stuff very, very quick. We start, stop, start, stop, start, and stop. So those meetings were building up our muscle to be consistent, to, to you know, not be able to see the major leaps and but still be able to put our heads down and work towards something. So if nothing else, have these business meetings slash family meetings 
to build your muscle of being consistent. Okay, that is super important. Consistency, without consistency, discipline and execution, nothing will happen. And that's with anything. That's with the gym. That's with a book you're trying to write. That is with studying in school. That is with anything. Consistency, discipline, and execution. Okay? So, that's it for this episode on uh, how to uh, business plan and, and, and have your business meetings and family meetings. Okay, you can uh, leave a comment below. If you're listening right now, leave a comment rating. I would totally, totally appreciate it. And, yeah, peace.